this is Fourth Time Around. Episode 15. Ed? Well, that's what I get for leaving the music to you, you smart aleck. A smart aleck? I think that's the first time I've ever heard you call me a smart aleck. You usually call me something else. Well, mm-hmm. We're going to keep that PG rating. <laughs> or we're going to go back to being the Flanders cast again. <laughs> So hi everybody, this is Joe. And Lisa. And this is our special Valentine's Day edition burr, burr, burr. of fourth time, fourth time Around. So yay. Aren't you people lucky that you tuned in tonight? It's also the special episode where we're going to reveal the secret and pregnant meaning of Fourth Time Around. It's a pregnant meaning? <laughs> Joe giggles when I say pregnant. Do you something to tell us? <laughs> no, no, no. That's how rumors get started. Uh, that's true. Yes, a lot of people have been asking us for a long time, well, what does it mean? What does it mean? The truth is it's pregnant as a rooster. Is I made that up just now. Beautiful. That is beautiful. <laughs> Which is to say, for those of you who didn't grow up on farms, it is not at all pregnant. Right. Nor am I. Uh, r- <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Okay, we get, we need to slow down here. Okay, okay. We're going a mile a minute here. Well, you wanted me to get some caffeine. We've and gone from no. Bob Dylan. I know. No fooling. Okay. So anyway, so we, we, we realize that it's been a mystery for a lot of people and that we have been rather coy about what fourth time around means. So let's clear up a few things right now. Right? Myth one. Joe's been married four times, right? This is his fourth marriage? Wrong. We need a buzzer. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Lisa and I have each been married once before. To other people. To other people. So Both heterosexual marriages. <laughs> well, you might you know what? You <laughs> might as well clear that up right now too. <laughs> let's not let's just knock all the little <laughs> let's knock all the little furry things down in the carnival right now. <laughs> as long as we're at it. So no, this is not Joe's fourth marriage. Well, we're not married at all, but this would not be Joe's fourth marriage, nor our combined fourth marriage. Correct. Um, what else? Between the two of us, we only have two kids. <laughs> and they're both mine. And they're both Joe's. <laughs> we did figure out some meanings to fourth time around, as far as the fourth something we did. The fourth time I came to Chicago to visit Joe... I stayed and moved in, Mm -hmm. not to his place, but to my own place. I had Mm -hmm. been here three times, and my fourth trip here, I brought all my worldly belongings. And I flew out to Seattle four times to visit you, and the fifth time I flew out was when you had your stuff all packed up and we drove back. Mm Mm-hmm. But I couldn't think of a song with fives, except since it's working (laughs) overtime (laughs) by XTC. Shall I start singing for everybody? No, let's not. Do my best Andy Partridge impersonation. But, um, yeah, so I flew out to Seattle four times to see you. And the fifth time, we got in your little car and we drove cross country. But I don't know what Bob was talking about when he wrote the song. We'll get to that later. But Well, well maybe we should talk about it now before we get further into... Okay, well, here's... Because it's a real interesting thing. While the song is still fresh in your head... You being the collective listening audience. Not me, the person you're looking at and talking to. We learned, we were researching the song and the title because we didn't want to accidentally pick a song that was about a serial killer or something like that. And we wanted to know more about what the song meant before we picked it as our banner. We found that the, the most commonly held theory is that fourth time around was Bob Dylan's answer to the Beatles' Norwegian Wood, which he felt was the Beatles' attempt to make fun of him, Bob Dylan. Take a listen. Rambling monologues about a story, about a girl. Um, The Beatles... Well, Norwegian Wood is a little bit... um, Like, wouldn't stand out, I don't think, as being so rambling as Fourth Time Around. But once you hear the two, one after another, you definitely see the similarities. The The theme is very similar. It's about a guy spending time with a woman. And, th- and there apparently is, nothing coming of it. And nothing coming of it. And they both react with some sort of, depending on how you interpret it, some sort of violence. Right. Because in the theory about Norwegian Wood, at the very end he says, I lit a fire. 
But the question is, did he set her apartment on fire or did he light a fire in the fireplace? Well, that's that's a valid question. That's a question that's been burning with Beatles fans for many years. No pun intended, I'm right. sure. But yes, burning. And um, in the Dylan song, doesn't doesn't she wind up she, like not alive anymore? <laughs> well, it's not real clear. She screamed and her face got so red that she fell on the floor. Oh, so she might have passed out or something. Well, yeah, who knows? I'm not it's hard to say if she it's hard to say what her state was. So needless to say it was a pleasant it, it's a pleasant But concept. then he went and looked through her stuff and something. Right. So anyway, so that is the song Fourth Time Around by Bob Dylan. We picked this song as the title for our podcast as we were uh, we've mentioned before the famous drive back from seeing a Badgers game, a Badgers football game in Madison, Wisconsin, uh-huh. as we were deciding about what we had. We had already decided that we were going to do a podcast, and now we were deciding what we were going to entitle it. Right. And we were going through song titles. We were going through my iPod, and one of the songs that was, one of the albums that I had on my iPod was the soundtrack to the movie Vanilla Sky, and the song appears in that film. Mm-hmm. That's how, that's how I heard it before I even became a Dylan fan, uh, which wasn't really all that long ago. As far as meaning, when I when I hear fourth time around the phrase, I think of having to try something over and over or getting to try something over and over. There's also an REM lyric that goes, "I need a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance," and I like that because it's so little. Do we get right on the first try? Right. And there's something very hopeful about, okay, fine, we're getting another chance to do this, so we'll do it right. Yeah. And you don't have to get it right the second time either. You have, you know, you have, do however you, you many times. You have I infinite mean, chances. Unless it's something like, I mean, honestly, I don't think that's a good philosophy for marriage. I think one well, should really point. strive to get it right every time. <laughs> <laughs> but Thanks. you know. Thanks, Zsa Zsa. Uh, you know, here's one. I'm enrolled in college for the fourth time. That's true. And I'm just now getting it right, I think. And I'm only getting it right now because I, I've done it three times before. You could, you know, whether if you're looking for the right job or trying to quit smoking or the right any the right car. So I hope we didn't disappoint anybody because, the, <laughs> well, the meaning is, what was the word you used earlier? You used a really good word to describe this earlier. It's not. A, it's not really a concrete thing that applies directly to us we could sit here and right. we, could, we could pull together all sorts of things and talk about how the, the number four has figured into our well, we could basically make things up well well but we didn't make anything up that we just said no no but, but i mean we could you know just it, like it's sort of can, right it's sort of like those things you can buy at a truck stop in the wisconsin dells that say oh here are the similarities between jfk and lincoln lincoln right, had right, a secretary right. named kennedy and kennedy had a secretary named lincoln right and we could come up with all sorts of mystical fours exactly but the, but the truth of the matter is is that we wanted a name for the podcast that was was different we were kind of inspired by a book that i was reading at the time called heavy words lightly thrown which is a great book and a great title for a podcast and a great title for a podcast but it was already taken by the book that's a it's the name of that heavy words lightly thrown is the name of a it's a Smith lyric, actually. Right. So we were trying to think of a name that would be cool for the pie. Because, you know, we, we could come up with a name like, you know, Lisa and Joe's House of Fun or something like that. <laughs> but we thought, you know, let's let's do something a little bit different. Right. So we came up with something and you used, you, you described it somehow. It wasn't abstract, but it was sort of like, do you, do you Oh, remember? the sound and the fury. Yes. Signifying nothing. It's an it's a nice name. That's all. And actually, that really attracted me about the song. I mean, I didn't want to use a song that was about something really important for our podcast, which generally is pretty light in nature. So I like it that there there are these lyrics that are sort of empty, and we're just you know giving meaning to this one neat turn of phrase. I, I don't know what Bob Dylan was thinking. <laughs> If you other can than imagine fact, that. Other than, other than the fact that he was PO'd at John Lennon at the time. I don't know what he was ever thinking about anything really truly, but when people asked, well, what does it mean? And he was like, I don't know, it's just a song. And I don't know if he really meant that or if he was being coy or if he didn't yeah. feel like answering the question. But I'm sure if you asked him what is fourth time around about, he would say, I don't know. What do you think it's about? We had that. We saw that great interview with Ed Bradley. And, and you know, it, I don't I, know. I don't know where it comes from. I don't know. You know. <laughs> uh. 
I can sympathize with the song. I mean, he writes these songs. He puts it out there. That's what it is what it is. Right. Nobody would ask Mozart, you know, what's your requiem about? I mean, well, I should <laughs> <laughs> Somebody dying for a start. <laughs> bad example. Bad example. <laughs> Still, I understand your point. So the point is to tie all this all together with a pr- nice, pretty little bow. The title of our podcast, fourth time around, is taken from a Bob Dylan song. We can apply all sorts of fours to it from our lives, but when it really comes down to it, it's meaningless. It's it's just a cool name. How's that? The end. The end. Okay. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would like to play a song that every time it rolls around on my iPod when it's on shuffle, it reminds me of you Aww. the little lady who's sitting across from me, me? here's just th- me not the <laughs> whole audience <laughs> just you darling lisa and i met on a okay we met on the internet we met on a writer's forum so we started writing back and forth and then we ultimately started talking on the phone and one night i had a very <laughs> i had a very vivid dream in which this song, which also happens to be another Beatles song, this song, th- this song featured very prominently in the in the dream. We, ha- I haven't even seen a picture of her at this point. And in my dream, you and I were at the Starbucks in downtown Arlington Heights, right around the corner from the Panera. For those of you who are here, mm-hmm. and walking distance from my condo, walking now. distance from where Lisa lives right now. And we were sitting at a table. It's a really tiny, tiny little. It's like the smallest Starbucks in the world. There's a counter. And there's like 10 chairs, and I think that's it. And it's a really tiny space. But anyway, we were sitting there, and I was reading the news. We were, I was reading a newspaper, you were reading a book or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, this song started playing, and we started singing the song to each other, Aww. which I thought was kind of cute and significant. But the weird thing about this dream is that I had never seen what Lisa looked like before. She had described what she looked like. Had I sent a picture? No, I didn't even see a picture of you. And in my dream, you looked exactly like you do. I mean, exactly. And I don't know if that means that you described yourself very vividly. Little pimple on my chin and everything. (laughs) And that third, and that third arm growing out of your forehead. Yeah, no. (laughs) You you turned out you looked exactly like I dreamed you. And it was the weirdest thing because when you finally did send a picture of to me, send a picture to me a couple mm-hmm. weeks later, it was like, okay, this is kind of weird. And then when I met you face to face, it was like, oh my god, I literally dreamed you up. Get out of my dreams and into my SeaTac. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought it was really weird because. I mean, it was one of those Technicolor dreams, full surround Uh sound, everything. And I woke up and I was like, wow, that was kind of weird. And you turned out to be exactly that way. And this this particular version of the song can be found on the I Am Sam soundtrack. And you dreamed the cover version, right? Yeah, it wasn't the Beatles version. It was this version. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, So there you have it. So that's my little story about, that's my little romantic story about Valentine's Day for you. Aw. Aw. <laughs> I'll tell the story about the first time I ever told Joe I love you. Aw. Joe and I were talking about 80s music, and we had seen pictures of each other at this point, I think, but we had never talked on the phone. And what I was starting to feel, I think I would have described as love. And occasionally he would do these sweet little things, and I would just think to myself, oh, I love you. In the sense of... You're great. You're the best. Dude, love you. One day, we were talking about 80s music, and he he sent me the lyrics to the song we were talking about. And not the English lyrics, but the German lyrics. And I said, oh my gosh, I love you. And then I said, and by that I mean... <laughs> we're never going to do a video podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of it. Aww. So we were sitting here all dreamy-eyed. <sighs> what else? This was another like thing that made me fall in love with Joe. Um, we had like th- this list going around the bulletin board of 20 questions. Things like, what's under your bed? 
um, what CD is in your car CD player right now? And one one question was, what is on your screensaver and mouse pad? And Joe wrote, I use a laptop, so I have no screensaver, no mouse pad. And then he added, not a single luxury. <laughs> and he just spelled it out, not a single luxury. <laughs> and I and just I ki- I killed him, man. I killed. I LOL'd. You, literally. You lolled. I laughed and laughed and laughed at that. I don't even know why. <laughs> And I, te- I, I think I private messaged you, and I was like, "Oh my god, you are too funny! You have no idea how much I've laughed at this." And what you must have been thinking, I was like a real easy audience. You, you still are. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I love you, is because you, you know, the old material is the best. And the great thing about the fact that you're younger than <laughs> I am is that all my jokes are new to you. I've never told a jo- Joe a joke that he hasn't already heard. Never. That's not that's not true. That is true. No, 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 no. When that's have not I true. ever I've been like, "Oh, Joe, I heard this great new joke here, listen." And you're like, "Oh, yeah, Benny Hill told that back in the 30s or whatever." <laughs> I remember back in 1937. <laughs> Only it involved like a Red, caveman and Red a- Skelton did it on his show and Burns and Allen were his guests. Yeah, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. No, because you know what? Because one of the things that you did, you, you IM'd me one time, and you said, you must be really tired because you've been running through my mind all day. <laughs> and, as smooth, <laughs> and as smooth as I like to think I am, I would never heard that before. What? I'm Where telling have you, you been? I'm telling you. It's just like the time that that guy, John, in a meeting referred to the short bus, and I just lost it because I've never <laughs> heard that. Never I never heard, heard the heard, short I never bus. heard that expression before. It's like, yeah, for those of us who took the short bus to work today, uh, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> completely disrupted a meeting because I'd never heard that before. That's great material. So you're great, but you're a great audience and you're beautiful. Don't ever change. Hey, are those astronaut pants you're wearing? No, why? Because your butt is out of this world. Boom. Oh, come on. <laughs> that's way better than you've been running through my head all <laughs> night. So that's beautiful. Did it hurt? It's a beautiful thing. What? <laughs> when you fell from heaven? Oh, that one, that, that one I've heard. I mean, right. Now we're going to turn into a, a, li- a whole thing of bad pickup yeah, lines. Yeah, and so. we don't want to do that. Okay. Okay, so um, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about, too. Oh, we are not going to do a cheap date tonight, so sorry, folks. But I did want to mention one thing, and this is a message to the guys in the crowd. Because it is Valentine's Day, and hopefully you'll have time to run out and do this ahead of time. So you need to cover your ears. Any chicks listening to this need to cover their ears. Okay. Very, okay, you don't have to really cover your ears. Lisa's sitting here no, like I will. putting her head in a vice practically. <laughs> Lance. It's a very th- theatrical ear covering so I can still it, hear. Oh, I see. Before I first flew out to see Lisa for the first time, I stopped at a little shop that we've mentioned here on the show before, a, st- a store called Urban Harvest. One of the ladies who works there, um, Courtney, said, Oh, and I told her that I was going out there, and she said, oh, you know what you're going to do? She goes, I know how you can win this girl's heart. Here, try one of these. And she opens up this little wicker basket, and she holds it out to me, and she says, everyone says exactly the same thing whenever they taste these, so try one. (laughs) And I reached in, and in this this little basket, there were these little sort of roundish brown chocolate. They were chocolate truffles. I'm like, okay, chocolate truffles, fine. Yeah, I know, women love chocolate, fine. I take one of these, I put it in my mouth, and it immediately starts melting. And I go, oh, my God. And Courtney starts laughing, and she says, that's what every single person who puts one of these things in their mouths says when they eat these because they're incredible. They're, they're either Belgian or French. I can't remember. French, I think. Okay. So anyway, so they're referred to as the oh, my God chocolates. I forgot what, they're actual, what the real name is. but So they sold them at this store, and I went over there a couple weeks ago to buy some for Lisa, not for Valentine's Day, but just because I'm a good guy. Aww. And um, they told me that they no longer sell them. So here's where you guys can take the advantage of this. Because what Courtney told me was that the same product is now sold under a different um, packaging for much less money mm-hmm. at Whole Foods. And they're called, what are they called? You have, you have a box I in st- I really don't know. They're called like chocolate truffles. And they're in a yeah. very simple box. They're like three ninety five. It looks a little bit like a Chinese food box. Right. And at the gourmet food shops, these things sold for like 15 or almost 20 bucks a box. Mm-hmm. And you get the same amount, only the packaging isn't quite as 
you know, is, is elaborate. But anyway, my message to you guys is if there's a Whole Foods nearby where you're living, wherever you're listening to this, get over there right now. They have a couple flavors. They have the, um, they have the regular chocolate. They have an, is it espresso or cappuccino? cappuccino? And then they have one other flavor, I think. But guaranteed, give these to your favorite significant other and dude you're in now one thing to note about these i took some to work one time and people were actually like they're very chocolatey and they're dusted with cocoa powder which some people found to be a bit too much so it's messy that's for sure and they melt they melt instantly yeah so um if your girlfriend is a light milk chocolate fan or a white chocolate fan these are way out of the league but if she likes rich milk chocolate or the or a little bit of dark chocolate, perfect. So, guys, there's your tip, your Valentine's Day tip. Go out. I don't care what you're doing. If you're if you're on your iPod right now, whatever. If there's a Whole Foods nearby, I'm I, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> Lisa, back me up on this. You're laughing, Just but get them. Just get them. That's right. So there you go. Joe could tell you the power they had without having to post this somewhere and now else. Now they're so freaking cheap. And on the subject of Valentine's Day gift exchanging, I began a little rant earlier that you told me to save for the podcast. Oh, yes. Go ahead. I read on MSN this article about what not to get your girlfriend for Valentine's Day. And then today I heard, overheard this little exchange. Um, some woman was saying to a young guy in our office, um, so are you going to do something nice for your girlfriend for Valentine's Day? He's only been with this girl a couple months. And he said, oh, yeah, I already have plans, already have reservations. And he said, oh, okay, good. And uh, she said something about how her sons, who are about his age, always say, well, Valentine's Day is a Hallmark holiday. You know, it's not a real holiday. And we were we were giggling about how guys always say that. Well, you know, Valentine's Day, it's not a real holiday. guess I better go get myself a teddy bear holding a heart. Hey, you know what? There is nothing... Here comes the rant, folks. I have been with guys on either end of the spectrum. Guys who brought me flowers every weekend for two years. And guys who acted like they would turn into a chick the minute they looked at a flower. And either one of those... I mean, there was a time in my life when I was tired of flowers. Because I was with this particular person who I felt like did that because he knew it was an easy way to score a few points. And really what I wish he would do is just be nice to me sometimes. And then I was with other guys who were really nice, like on a day-to-day basis, but it would never, just for some reason they never, it seemed like they were never thinking, hmm, what could I do on Valentine's Day that would make this girl realize... That I, that I care about her, that I'm thinking about her. I've also heard stories, and I won't go into details, about guys who have done misguided things on Valentine's Day mm. with the best intentions at heart. And here's the conundrum we have in Valentine's Day. It is a Hallmark holiday. Everybody knows that. Women put all this pressure on guys to do something, and I don't think guys always perform very well under pressure in the romantic area. I don't mean anything. I, I mean, I, understand what you're I mean, if a guy think he thinks he has to sweep a woman off her feet, a lot of guys get really nervous about that. Some guys are up to the challenge and they like the challenge, but the truth is, most guys are like, "Oh, geez, how do I do that?" And they go and they go to this aisle in Hallmark or Walgreens or the mall or wherever, and they're like overwhelmed by the sea of red and pink. They don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And you know what? They do the best they can. And when it comes from the heart, even if it is a stuffed teddy bear with a And even if it heart, is, you know, even if it is your guy ran into Walgreens to pick up a prescription and he walked through the candy aisle and thought, oh, that's a cute little stuffed bear holding a heart and picked it up for you. <laughs> What's wrong? That's better than nothing. I mean, when I'm... Dude, I buy you presents because I'm at the gas station and I see some candy you like. And you I'm buy like, a Ruger for me. And I'm like, oh, Joe likes Ruger. I'll buy him Ruger. Mm-hmm. And I'll I'll bank one. <laughs> 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 you know what? I, so what's wrong with, I mean. Too much pressure applied. Some, some of the things that were on the on the no list were things like a dozen red roses. I'm not sure when, I mean, 
I'm not sure. It's not like every girl has got a dozen red roses a thousand times. Maybe uh, were they trying to imply that it was too cliche? Yes. Okay. Although I think if there's ever a time that cliches are okay, <laughs> Valentine's Day is it. Now, if you have a girl who changes her own oil and kills plants when she gets near them and would rather, I don't know, would rather go see Metallica play than the symphony, then maybe Red Roses are not the right way to go. You have to, you have to consider your audience. I think so. Some, consider your, the some person that you're girls are for. not really flower people. They also recommended, you know, you try to find out what your girl's favorite flower is or just get off the beaten path a little bit. And I don't disagree with that. But on the other hand, quite frankly, I think any woman who scoffs at a dozen red roses has it all wrong. So the moral of the story is Hallmark holiday, the moral, too much pressure on guys. And too guys much just pressure do your on best. guys, which makes guys falter, which w- makes women put even more pressure on them. Mm-hmm. And it's a vicious cycle. And, and you know what? I appreciate that. I think you're in the... Well, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to get kicked. <laughs> get my <laughs> butt kicked. No, I've been. I've I've known women who were very much like, well, if I don't, if he doesn't get me, blah blah blah, for Valentine's Day, I've been dropping hints all month about the fact that I want this coach bag or whatever. I don't think Valentine's Day is a time for big gift giving. No, I agree. Dude, buy her like a Starbucks gift card so she can go have free mochas. Learn what she orders at Starbucks and buy it for her. Oh, that's pretty sweet, Order it yeah. and, because, trust me, I could uh, I could learn the periodic table before I could learn what a lot of people I know <laughs> order at Starbucks. We have a double tall, macchiato, triple, no lime, extra... No lime? <laughs> extra Gross. pine saw. I don't know. <laughs> the whole thing is make sure your intent is known. Make sure that you're... Mm-hmm. Tailor it. Make sure that it's, you know, it comes from the heart. That's cool. So thank you for that. On behalf of the male population in this society, I appreciate that. Okay, there's one other thing that uh, one other thing that I wanted to go through, and that was this hey, list. What do guys want for Valentine's Day? Oh come on! <laughs> like something nice that you can put in a gift bag. Well, come on. Beer. Okay, that'll work. Okay. Kinder toy to the first guy who posts on the blog. <laughs> no, really, I want to. I want to know because I can't buy you gadgets. Anytime I go to a website that has like what to get your guy for V Day, no, no, no. You, okay, it's you like freaking Swiss Army knives. No, 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 no. Backpacks. Nothing, no, you know what? Power Val- drills. No, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is really a, is really a chick holiday. You know, uh, don't look at me, <laughs> <laughs> Lisa. Lisa has. She she has an expression. She has two expressions that she makes with her <laughs> eyebrows. When her left eyebrow goes up, she looks remarkably like Angelina Jolie, which I think is pretty hot. Oh, that is so. It's the truth. <laughs> okay, okay. She makes she lifts her left eyebrow. She looks like Angelina. Jolie. She lifts her right eyebrow. She looks like The Rock, <laughs> and she just gave me the Rock eyebrow. No, it seriously. I, you know what I like? I like candy. I like chocolate. I like all. So you know what I like? Just something. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be big. It's just. Anything you don't little. need to be swept off your feet. No, 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 <laughs> no. Good heavens! Hey, clear this up once and for all. How are guys on getting flowers from girls? I personally, I think it's awesome. You've sent when me I send flowers. You, flowers. you sent me flowers, and it's the coolest thing because people are coming up to my desk like, "Oh, look at this." Do you know any guys who feel like emasculated by that? Yeah, I have known guys who feel emasculated by it. So you probably need to feel your guy out. I read in, that in a certain... <laughs> in a, in a, <laughs> that's what he really wants. A, we've, we've now hit it. We try to dance around it, and you have now hit it right on the head. I read that in some survey, 61% of men said they would like to receive flowers from women. I, I believe that. So you probably need to know which side of the line your guy falls on. Exactly. And it also depends on the kind of flowers. Like, you don't want to send him a big thing of... Pansies. <laughs> pansies. <laughs> what, I don't know. what could be a more wimpy flower than the pansy? Well, exactly. Well, I lucked out. When I've sent you flowers, I've gotten good, like sort of masculine arrangements. You get. You sent me a really cool arrangement of um, three different color, three different color roses. Yeah, like orange and yellow and red. I yeah, think. what was in the fall too, and it was really cool. And I had people come up to me just like, man, like man, what did you do? Hey, you know and what? You just grinned. Exactly. It's the coolest thing in when the world. When she's sending me flowers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I wanted to. Sorry. 
That's okay. I wanted to go over. Um, I also wanted to share one more thing with the folks for Valentine's Day. Um, we have two local papers. Actually, I think we have three local papers. But anyway, the Pioneer Press um, published something called the Pioneer Press Steamometer, talking about Whoa. talking about steamy movies for Valentine's Day. And they have several categories. And what I want to do is run across is some of these. Is Dirty Dancing on there? I want to. I don't know. I'm going to run across some of these titles okay. and just really quickly, you tell me um, what you what you think or feel about them. Okay. Mm-hmm. And some of these I know you haven't seen, but I have seen. Um, under the starting to simmer category, we have It Happened One Night with Clark Gable and Claudette, Claudette Colbert. I have not seen that, okay. but Clark, Clark Gable's hot. Yeah, and that and that actually was starting to simmer it, for, for its time. That was 1934. It was actually Wait, what good. were the real wimpy ones? Lady and the Tramp? Oh, Safe as Milk, Lady and the Tramp. <laughs> but you know what? They That's had so the, sweet. They had a the little thing with, you know, spaghetti. Um, the Pressure Mounts, From Here to Eternity with Burt Lancaster and, and Deborah Kerr, which you... The famous scene is of the two of them making out on the beach and the surf and everything. I I saw that a while ago. Um, Officer and a Gentleman? I haven't seen it. Okay. I will say that one's pretty good. Yeah? From from a steamy standpoint, it's pretty good. Shakespeare in Love? I have seen that. I like that just... I thought it was was one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. It was. It's a really great movie. Here we go. Kinder Toy to the first person who posts on the blog what the original name of Romeo and Juliet was. According to this movie, okay. Um, steam under the category of steam powered, we have nine and a half weeks. I haven't seen that. I always hear that that's like the hot movie. Actually, the person who wrote this, a dude by the name of Bruce Ingram, who writes all the film blurbs in this paper, uh-huh. he he put this absolutely perfectly. A gallery assistant and a stockbroker, Kim Basinger and Mickey Rourke, spend a couple of torrid months adding new chapters to the Kama Sutra. Then they notice that they're both basically creeps. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That describes it perfectly because I never, I mean, this was 1986. I remember when this movie came out. I never saw what the attraction to Mickey work is. You, you look at the guy and you, you just want to say, dude, take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, yeah. I, so I didn't, it's really hot and then they break up? Yeah, basically. Oh, and one of my absolute favorite songs in the world is featured in this film as well. Brian Ferry, Slave to Love. In nine and a half weeks? In nine and a half weeks. Um, next we have Bull Durham, Kevin Costner, Susan Sarandon. I don't, personally don't see the attraction to Susan Sarandon. Yeah. Um, and Tim Robbins, too. Oh, that's right. I forgot. What was his name? Crash? Something like that. Or that was Kevin Costner's name, I think. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. I'm a, I'm a big Kevin Costner fan, so. All I remember is a scene in a bathtub with lots of candles. And all I remember is um, she tied Tim Robbins to the bed and was reading something to him. And then she made him wear her garter belt when he went to pitch. I remember that. And don't be getting ideas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then like water for chocolate. Oh. Oh, yeah. A Lisa and Joe favorite. Oh, yes. Here's the interesting thing. Okay. The, 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 the movie came out in 1992. It is a pretty hot movie. And... The the version that's on video right now is not the same version that I saw when this movie was in the theater back in 1992. I distinctly remember the movie. I distinctly remember the version that I saw in the theater as being much more explicit than the version that's on DVD right now. Really? Yeah, because I remember when we watched it, it was like, hey, wait a minute. They they just cut like five minutes out of this. So, oh. so I need to do some research on that. And yeah, find we need out to exactly find out what's up with whatever that. Happened. The one movie that should be on this list which I think should be on here and isn't, is one of my favorite movies of all time, which is The Thin Man. That really belongs in the starting... As a, dis- as a steamy movie? Oh, I was, starting in the to starting simmer. to simmer thing, because I, I've, I've seen a lot of movies, and especially the, old movies, the older movies, and this, I mean, this is one of the movies that really showed a couple, a romantically involved couple that was actually believable. You actually, when you watch, mm-hmm. when you watch Myrna Loy and William Powell on the screen, it's like, you can see the two of them. Like these two have real chemistry on the screen. And I guess, I guess MGM thought so and movie theater and moviegoers thought so as well, because they made like six of these movies. So, right. Like they're really comfortable together, but they also are still really attracted to each other. Not like new love, but also not like, your cl- classic old married couple. So if you haven't seen The Thin Man, 
Seriously, it, it's a it's a murder mystery, but it's funny. Mm-hmm. And I know that there are people out there who won't rent movies that are in black and white. Oh, get over it. And it is fun to see a really, um, you know, a really positive, fresh screen couple like that. Mm-hmm. So that's it for our Valentine's Day show. Hope you all enjoyed it. We didn't get too mushy. Nah, we could have gotten a lot more mushy. We probably will <laughs> here in a few minutes. We do want to say thank you for all of the emails and all the comments on the blog. We want to say hi to JC from St. From St. Louis. We got your email. He, he moved here from, he moved to the United States in, in 1978 from Venezuela. We also want to say hi to Shelly from Shelly's podcast. She has an open invitation for us to go to Austin to see, um, to see, to go to various bars and whatnot, and to also Ooh. see, and also to see Tony Price at the Continental Club. Also, hi to Jay and Annie from Scenes from the Next Whenever. We, we hope you're going to be getting the Kinder Toys. Jay won our contest last week. And are all pals of the Big Show and Z and Z. Carol and Charlie, and now maybe Carol and Charlie will be off my back. <laughs> now that we've explained. Fourth time around. Fourth time around. Oh, and John G. And Daryl and Luis, who called my bluff on bipedalism. Note that I'm not talking about anthropology anymore. <laughs> and also to, I don't know how to pronounce the name, Aiden, Adan, Adan or Aiden. Just tell us what it is. Okay. That's it. Well, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the show. Have fun. We'll be back next Love week. Love your loved ones. Yes, please. It's not rocket science. That's beautiful. It's not. There's nothing to it. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Go and be romantic. Good night. This podcast is proudly listed at podcastpickle.com. So, on, Chica. Oh, Leo. Two cocktails. Yes. Uh, yes, Pretty girl. Yes, yeah, she's a very nice type. You got types? Only you, darling. Lanky brunettes with wicked jaws. Leo, compliments to see you. Who is she? Oh, darling, I was hoping I wouldn't have to answer that. Come on. Well, Dorothy is really my daughter. You see, it was spring in Venice. When I was so young, I didn't know what I was doing. We're all like that on my father's side. By the way, how is your father's side? Oh, it's much better, thanks. And yours? Say, how many drinks have you had? This will make six martinis. All right. Will you bring me five more martinis? Leo, line them right up here. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. What hit me? The last martini. How about a little pick-me-up? No!